The Hans-Peter Porsche Dream Factory is a perfect space for railroads and many other great things. These exhibits date from the era of tin toys, when Märklin II had been producing neat little railroads made of tin plate. Of course, there were also a number of matching accessories. The trains operate on time, even in the children's room. It's high time they headed to the station by Automobile. With a racing car made by Märklin, one can get there in no time. Impressive ships like these are real eye-catchers, and a couple of elegant racehorses have met up for a date at the main station in Leipzig. The Hans-Peter Porsche Dream Factory has given themselves an educational task, which is to demonstrate the transformation from toy trains to contemporary model railroads. There's a lot to discover on this Märklin layout, measuring about 400 square meters. As we are watching, a locomotive is pulling its freight across the Krausel-Klausel viaduct, which is part of the Semmering line. It's series 1020 of the Austrian Federal Railroad. A Taurus comes heading from the opposite direction. The trains meet on their way across the Kalte Rinne viaduct, one of the most impressive structures at the Semmering. A projector casts images on the wall, dark clouds move in and a bright moon is rising over above the mountains. But then... There will always be sunshine after every thunderstorm here at the Dream Factory. Club members receive a reduced entry fee of 10 instead of 12 euros. Let's move on to a place where dreams come true as well. Various bits and pieces are assembled into the club model of series 18.5. Thus, the finely detailed fast train engine evolves step by step. The pointed door of the smoke box, one of the distinct characteristics of series 18.5. Every single movement has to be precise. The roof houses the crucial device for the switchable driver's cap light. Isabel Marquez focuses on her work. Assembling the tiny rods poses a tricky challenge. It's worth mentioning that the coupled axle is mounted in spring bearings. A five-pole motor will be at work inside the model. We have a few optimizations on the locomotive. We've taken measures to optimize the model a little. The locomotive received a second flywheel in order that the model would gain even smoother running characteristics. A couple of steps further down the production line, Olga Schwarzkopf finishes off with mounting the final piece, the boiler. A checkup begins as soon as every piece is put into place. Does the pickup shoe work properly? It does. This has not been the last checkup though. The model will have to undergo a series of complex tests. I have been overseeing the production of this model for about two years now. It's great to see the results now that the first models have been completed. I think this is a really fantastic locomotive. We've taken our customers' criticism very seriously and revised the gap between locomotive and tender accordingly. The locomotive comes with a drawbar that is no longer curved but straight. Moreover, we included a model of the crossover plate for the first time. 
In addition, we carried out a number of alterations on the tender. Now the much criticized gap between locomotive and tender is hardly visible. A happy crowd has assembled here, despite the dismal weather. They are enjoying an open day held by the DEV, the German Railroad Association, over the past Lent weekend. One of the attractions was the Franzburg, which is the prototype of a current LGB model. A cute little vehicle. The Franzburg and its history mean a lot to the LGB. Its prototype was built more than a hundred years ago and used to operate on the Franzburg circuit along the Baltic Sea coast. Later it was taken over by the State Railroad and the DRG decided to put it out of service. The locomotives found their way into the west. One ended up on a playground in the Ruhr area and the second was set up in front of the LGB site in Nuremberg. Meanwhile, one of them belongs to the DEV and runs in front of chartered trains during the summer. The other locomotive now sits on Märklin CEO Wolfrad Bechle's garage. The large and small locomotives meet at last. The LGB in Nuremberg had planned to produce a model of the Franzburg about 10 years ago, and there had even been a sample in the making. As we all know, there was a rough time following, so that the model's release only took place recently. Of course, this version doesn't look anything like the early sample from 10 years ago, but was developed as a completely new design. The model comes with a lot of mounted details, including the two doors that can be opened manually. There are two different versions available. The green one, whose prototype is operated by the DEV, and the black one, depicting the DR prototype from the 1950s, which used to operate at the Baltic Sea coast. Both locomotives are distinguishable at the first glance by means of their respective double or triple headlights and the different license plates. There are two different sets of cars available, one in the DEV version with both freight and passenger cars. The two freight cars can be loaded to one's personal liking. Another option is a set of three cars from ERA 3 that depict the prototypes of the Franzburg circuit operation in the service of the DR. Proper lubrication is crucial for the bigger version of the Franzburg. Both the prototype traveling along the DEV's tracks and its LGB equivalent remind us of a long-gone era of romantic local lines like this. This locomotive is waiting for its new appearance. The repair workshop in Dessau is all set for the task lying ahead. There is a designated area for every single print. The different text and pictures all convey a clear message. It's time for celebration. The Märklin Dealer Initiative, abbreviated MHI, has been attending to our insider customers for 25 years. Their key competences have been a reliable advisory service and a thorough technical advice for more than 20 years. This is reason enough to celebrate accordingly both for the Märklin Managing Board and the Märklin Dealer Initiative. On this occasion, we've come up with the idea of displaying the entire history of railroads in one single picture. The transformation is carried out piece by piece. Klaus Hunger of the Berger company, which specializes in transport media, is familiar with the various production steps. He knows exactly where to put each print. It's really hard to believe that this long, long sheet is actually going to stick to the locomotive sides without any creases remaining on the surface. Our expert knows his business, though. The result is a nice link between a long-gone era of railroading and a modern mainline locomotive of the DB Corporation. Series 101 is a perfect ad space due to its smooth surfaces. It sure looks good with the new colors on. What's special about working on a locomotive is that the German Federal Railway is very strict about their safety regulations. Therefore, the sheets have to meet certain standards for fire prevention, and it is absolutely necessary that we comply with these. Furthermore, the sheets are meant to have a very high adhesion, because this locomotive goes at 200 km per hour. This is in contrast to a city bus, for example. 
so we need the sheets to remain in place at high speed. We remain with the locomotive a little longer while it's being veiled bit by bit. Meanwhile, the prints cover most of the original color, but there is some more work to do. Klaus Hunger makes sure that there will be no visible seams remaining between the sheets. The transformation has been accomplished. Märklin has then decided to turn this locomotive into a model and offer it to our customers, who would like to mark this special anniversary on their layouts as well. The actual design was carried out on the computer. Dil Kunstdorfer matches the pictures and texts with the 101's proportions. He creates a highly vivid image, including some little tricks. Clouds like these, against a clear blue sky, are every steam engine enthusiast's dream. This is how the prototype is supposed to be depicted in model scale. This sample already campaigns for the colorful locomotive, which will be offered in both half-O and Z-scale versions. This model will surely please the kids as well. Wir möchten gerne ähm, unseren Beitrag dazu leisten in einer gemeinschaftlichen Aktion unter dem Namen The joint project called Dad Let's Play is meant to promote this invaluable link between children or grandchildren and their parents or grandparents as a guarantee for spending their precious free time together. Who doesn't enjoy looking back on the times when one used to unwrap the model railroad at Christmas and sat down to play with it together with one's dad or granddad? This concept is still up to date as we are dealing with a 3D toy that is able to convey a very unique experience. This is something that we've been witnessing at fairs and the like for years. Whenever we exhibit our Macklin My World and Macklin startup products, which were designed for kids from three or six years onwards, we observe how the kids are spellbound because they get a chance to try out all the different items. Model railroads are still able to fascinate the kids. And this should always be an important goal, and thus we stand a chance to promote a new generation of model railroaders for the future. By now, the case of Series 101 has reached the painting department. Certain prints are carried out by means of pad printing, others by means of stencil printing. In contrast, the central motive is carried out through digital printing. This technology has found its way into the main site in Göppingen, where it's being used in many different ways. Each body has to undergo a close inspection. Sabine Koch and Marina Reitz share this duty so that not a single flaw may go unnoticed. These recent printing results do look good. Established MHI customers will be in for another treat on the occasion of the MHI's anniversary this year. The first 499 customers to spend 1,500 euros and to document their purchases in their incentive booklet will receive an exclusive special car for free. A total of 500 examples will be offered for sale. This will be a very nice addition to the MHI locomotive. Until then, we have another chance to admire Series 101071 in its new outfit as it leaves the repair workshop in Dessau. The pretty locomotive will be operating all over Germany and it will take Euro city trains as far as Klagenfurt and Graz in Austria. Starting summer 2015, it will also take up its duties in the model scale on your layouts at home.